Hello, everyone. My name is Arthur Hayes. I'm the co-founder and CEO of BitMEX, the uh, Bitcoin Mercantile Exchange. Um, we're a Bitcoin derivatives trading platform for retail traders. Um, so the last time I did one of these webinars was about six or seven months ago, I think. And in that time, our platform has changed quite considerably, and we've had an influx of uh, a lot of new traders and users on the platform. And so I thought it was Sorry, one second. And I thought it was uh, high time for me to do another webinar to help explain futures trading and some more advanced trading strategies such as cash versus futures arbitrage, futures versus futures arbitrage, and basis trading. So this is the first lesson in a series of lessons, and we're going to go over some of the basics of how to price a futures contract and the differences between some of the futures contracts that are out there right now. A little bit about me, if you haven't uh, met me before, um, I was a former equity derivatives trader in Hong Kong for about five years. I traded exchange traded funds and did um, arbitrage across equity stock index futures uh, in China and other Asian markets. So I basically am taking the same strategies that I use at an investment bank and applying them to Bitcoin. So let's get started. I hope everyone has um, a copy of the slide deck. I'll post it in the chat again in case uh, anyone's missed it. And now I'll start uh, to share my screen so you guys can see everything. Okay, so um, the evolution of a Bitcoin trader goes as follows. Most of us started um, by buying our first Bitcoin on our local Bitcoin exchange. For me, it was MT Gox, and we transferred some money, uh, and then we wanted to buy Bitcoin immediately. And that is what we call a spot transaction, uh, where uh, the exchange of uh, currencies is delivered immediately to the other party. And that's uh, the mo this most simple type of trading and what we all uh, got started in Bitcoin doing. Then people started to graduate on to margin trading, which is basically um, borrowing money from another person, um, either in exchange on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, and then buying and selling Bitcoin with borrowed funds on the same spot exchange. And then the most advanced type of trading that we have currently is futures trading. Uh, which is buying or selling a financial contract between two people that will settle based on the Bitcoin price or the price of um, any other uh, third-party index. So the first question um, that many people ask when they come on to BitMEX is, where does the leverage come from? Um, you know, we offer uh, very high leverage up to 100 times on our most popular daily contract. And people um, rightly ask, well, who is lending uh, this money? Uh, so right now, I will show you a spreadsheet. This is the Arbitrage Lesson 1 spreadsheet. And we're on the Leverage tab. And so I want to just illustrate uh, the differences between spot margin and futures trading. So if we look at spot trading, um, assume that we have 100 US dollars um, of cash. The Bitcoin US dollar price is $100. Uh, because uh, on a spot basis, there's no leverage, we can buy or sell by one Bitcoin. Now assume that the price goes up 10% and we make $10 or a 10% return on equity. So when you're trading on a spot basis, uh, if you go up 10%, you make 10%. Let's see what happens when we go down 10%. You lose $10 and you lose 10% of your equity. Very simple. There's no leverage. Um, this is very easily understood by uh, most people trading Bitcoin. Then we move on to uh, margin trading. Now, assume that uh, the exchange um, that lets us uh, leverage 3.3 uh, times which is, means that you have to put down 30% of the value of the total size 
of Bitcoin that you'd like to buy. You still have $100, uh, and now you can borrow an, an additional $233 for a total buying power of $333. The same Bitcoin US dollar price at $100, and now we have uh, about 3.3 um, Bitcoin that we can actually buy. So let's examine what happens when the price changes. The price goes up 10%, and our profit uh, has almost has over tripled. So we have 3.33, a 33% return on equity. So the addition of leverage actually serves to enhance our return. Uh, now, with margin trading, there actually is an interest rate uh, that is applied to this leverage. So each day, let me type this in down here. Let's say that we paid one uh, percent. So if we look at our daily interest costs, we're paying $2.33 every day in interest. Now, usually, this interest rate um, for Bitcoin is a pretty variable rate. And you'll only be able to lock it in for maybe one or up to 30 days. So if you're looking to do a longer term trade, the cost of holding your position um, is not known into the future. And it could fluctuate wildly, especially if the Bitcoin price starts moving um, big in one or the other directions. Now the third type of trading, futures trading. Um, now Bitcoin futures uh, are unique in that uh, most of the exchanges, including us, we require you to post Bitcoin as the collateral or margin. We don't take U.S. dollars or another fiat currency. So as soon as you send your Bit your BitMEX account one Bitcoin of equity, uh, you have a Bitcoin U.S. dollar price of one hundred dollars, and um, assume that each contract uh, will be worth zero point zero one Bitcoin for each change in the U.S. dollar price. So uh, one contract is worth one Bitcoin at $100. Uh, assume that the exchange says it will give you 25 times leverage, which means that you would place 4% down um, an initial margin, uh, which means that you have a buying power of 25 contracts. Uh, and how we get that is we basically take, if you look at the fun formula here, um, we're dividing uh, your equity uh, by uh, the actual initial margin. Now, assume that we have the same 10% price change. If you look here, we made 2.5 Bitcoin on our one Bitcoin or a 250% return on equity. So because of the higher leverage, uh, you're able to generate higher returns. However, you also can generate higher losses. So you actually will lose 100% of your money if the price goes down 4% or the amount of money that you placed into uh, the contract. Now, the good thing about futures contracts or the advantage over margin trading is that there's no daily cost of interest. The futures contract will either trade at a premium or discount. We'll discuss how to calculate that later in this webinar. And that implied difference is your fixed cost of borrowing or lending for the term of the futures contract which means that when you place the trade uh, using futures contracts, you know exactly how much interest you're paying over the life of the contract. Okay, so now we've uh, gone over quickly the differences between um, leverage, where does it come from, uh, and uh, spot margin and futures trading. Now let's move on uh, to what types of futures contracts uh, exist in the Bitcoin universe. So there are two types of futures contracts that are popular today uh, on the BitMEX platform. The first are what we call quanto futures. Basically that means we take a fixed Bitcoin multiplier and apply it to the Bitcoin price quoted in US dollars. So if you look here, the formula for the Bitcoin value, I use the three letter term XBT for Bitcoin, 
Um, some people you like to use BTC. Uh, we can go into the differences later, but this is XBT value or Bitcoin value is the price of the futures contract times the multiplier times the number of contracts. So quite, uh, quite simple. And then the US dollar value of that contract is the price squared times the multiplier times the number of contracts. So if we look uh, on a general basis, uh, the value of a quanto Bitcoin futures contract in Bitcoin terms is linear. A 1% move up equals a 1% move in the value of the futures contract and is quadratic, i.e. squared, in US dollar terms. So a 10% move up in the Bitcoin price equals an 11% return in US dollars. Uh, now, on BitMEX, our highly leveraged contracts expiring daily, weekly, and quarterly are Quanto contracts. Uh, now, let's go over some more detail about how these perform under certain circumstances. So, please um, refer to the Quanto Futures tab on uh, this spreadsheet. Um, so, right here, I have uh, given an example. Uh, assume that you hold uh, 100, uh, sorry, 10,000 contracts of a BitMEX uh, Quanto Futures contract. We use the three letter um, acronym XBT in front of the, the ex expiration nom uh, nomenclature for Quanto. And we have a multiplier of 1,000 Satoshis. And what I've done here is I've uh, constructed a um, scenario where from the Bitcoin spot price expiring from zero to uh, 1,000 US dollars. And then we just computed the Bitcoin value and the US dollar value at each price. And you'll see this here. And then we graphed it so that it's more, it's easier to understand what's going on. So as I said before, the Bitcoin value is linear with respect to uh, the change in the Bitcoin US dollar price. And you'll see that with this blue line here. So from zero to uh, 100 Bitcoin. So if you make 1%, uh, more up, it goes up 1%. Now, the interesting thing is, is the US dollar value. And as you can see here, it's curved, indicating a uh, quadratic uh, return. Now, most of us uh, Bitcoiners like to think in Bitcoin terms, but uh, many of our costs, you know, our rent and things are in US dollars or some other currency that is primarily priced off the US dollar. So it is very important to know how your contract performs in U.S. dollar terms. And this curve line indicates, indicates that here. The second type of futures contracts uh, that we offer are inverse futures contracts whereby each contract is worth a fixed amount of US dollars at each Bitcoin price. So to compute the US dollar value of this contract is quite simple. Uh, you have the US dollar value, i.e. Uh, $100, times the number of contracts that you hold. So if you hold one contract, you have $100 of exposure. If you have 100 contracts, you have $10,000 of exposure. And then the Bitcoin value. So what we do is we take the US dollar contract value, in this case uh, $100, divided by the Bitcoin US dollar price, and then multiplied by the number of contracts. So what we have is, in terms of a return profile, is a fixed uh, return in US dollar terms, but an exponential return in Bitcoin terms. We call this contract our Bit BitMEX hedging, or XBU series of Bitcoin US dollar futures contracts. And now let's take a look at a graphical representation of that. Uh, please refer to the inverse futures tab. So here we have 100 contracts of XBU futures um, with a, a contract value of $100 and then the same um, uh, spot price from zero to 1,000. And now we have the graph of our US dollar and Bitcoin return. Now, as I said, the US dollar value of this contract is fixed at $10,000. And as we see at any price, our contract is worth 10,000 US dollars. But because we're dividing by the price of Bitcoin, the, the uh, 
value of Bitcoin is exponential, or x to the minus 1, or 1 over x. And we see this sort of asymptotic curve here, whereby the lower the price goes, the more the, uh, the value of Bitcoin that each contract is worth, and the higher that the price goes, the less the contract is worth in Bitcoin terms. Now, uh, we, we know that a 1 over x function, the max that you can ever, ever go up is 100%. In, on these inverse contracts if you're along. And we'll go into the implications of that in the next section. Okay, so now we have our uh, quanto and inverse contracts. Uh, so let's figure out what is better for what type of trader. So in summary, a quanto futures contract is better for bullish traders or Bitcoin denominated speculators. Where and the inverse futures contract is better for bearish traders or traders who need to hedge a um, value of Bitcoin in US dollars. And all else being equal, a quanto futures contract with a similar maturity of an inverse futures contract will trade at a premium. Please refer to the quanto versus inverse tab. Okay, so a little bit more complicated now. Assume that we have a Bitcoin US dollar price of $500. And we have two types of futures contracts, the XBT quanto series and the XBU inverse series. Now, assume that we have, we're gonna have an equal exposure in both US dollar and Bitcoin terms at $500. And this is that table here. So the multipliers, the number of contracts that we hold, and as you see here at $500, the US dollar and Bitcoin values are equal. And this table basically um, shows the uh, return in Bitcoin terms, the profit and loss, PL equals profit and loss, in Bitcoin and US dollar terms for each type of futures contract. So we have quanto here in rows, sorry, in columns B and C. D and E are for the inverse. And then we're going to look at, we're going to compare being long quanto versus short inverse and short quanto versus long inverse. And again, we're going to look at a price um, window from zero to 1,000 US dollars. So if we look over here, we have two graphs. So let's focus on the long quanto versus short inverse graph first. What do we see here? We see that the US dollar return is parabolic. So at a price of $500, there, each contract, um, the, you have no PL impact. As the price starts to move higher, your return in US dollar terms is exponentially uh, going up. As the price goes down, you also make money. This is an awesome trade. Being long the quanto, because your US dollar return is squared and short a contract with a fixed US dollar exposure means that you benefit when the price moves up or down in a large fashion. Now, if we look at our Bitcoin um, PL, as we see here, because of the 1 over X component in the inverse futures, uh, we have this sort of uh, exponential. Uh, decline and then rise again. Now it's important to notice because we margin all futures contracts in Bitcoin, you would like you need to know how uh, the Bitcoin value of your contracts changes with the change in price. Because depending on the movement in the market, you may be asked to post additional margin to cover any losses on a position. And you know, getting margin called is not an ideal thing for a trader to happen. So as we see, it's better to be long quanto and short inverse as a price up or price down means we make money. Now let's, let's look at the opposite. 
long inverse short quanto. As we see here, we have a parabolic, we have the reverse of this graph, whereby we are almost your negative PL in every circumstance if the price goes up or the price goes down. Now, this phenomenon is called gamma in option terms, convexity in bond terms. And it basically means nonlinear returns as the price moves in the extreme in either direction. So now that we know that it's better to be long a quanto contract and short an inverse, that doesn't mean that the market is going to present us with a situation where each contract is trading at the same price at the same time. As I said before, you will usually find that a quanto contract will trade at a premium to an inverse contract. So let's put in a premium of say $100. Now we see these graphs shift. So now on a long quanto short inverse trade, we have a section where we are underwater. Basically, the premium of the quanto futures contract over the short inverse contract is, is like an options premium. You're paying for implied forward volatility. If the price doesn't move and you've paid a premium over the inverse contract, you're going to lose that premium in a small amount every day. We call that theta or time decay. As the price moves in the extreme in either direction, you benefit from being long volatility and that premium, as I said before, is like your entry ticket. And on the other side of the coin, if we want to sell volatility or go long, inverse, short, quanto, we benefit when the market does not move uh, in an extreme fashion. But if the market does trade outside of our break-even points, we stand to lose money in a nonlinear fashion. So does that mean that you should always be long, quanto, and short, inverse? Well, no. You have to look at how much are you paying for this volatility ticket. Uh, sometimes in our daily expiring contract, we've seen situations where the daily premium is not justified by uh, what volatility is likely to realize that within the next 24 hours. And in that situation, you want to be long inverse and short quanto. We'll cover those trades in more detail in future lessons. Okay, now that we've gone over exactly uh, how <clears throat> the differences of quantum and inverse futures contract present themselves, let's take a look, step back, and some more uh, first principles about how to price a futures contract. So for Bitcoin futures contracts, the most important uh, financial identity is uh, covered interest rate parity. You can Wikipedia this later, and but I've summarized the basic flow of cash flow on this slide. Basically, covered interest rate parity is a relationship that describes the lending and borrowing rates of two currencies, their spot value, i.e. the value right now for delivery, and the value in the future for delivery, and how these, uh, these things interact. So let's assume that you go uh, to your bank and you borrow US dollars for one year at 10%. You take those borrowed US dollars and you go buy Bitcoin on a spot basis. You now uh, are short US dollars, you have a loan to pay back in one year, and you're a long Bitcoin that you have to do something with for one year. Hopefully the price goes up or maybe you have other plans for that Bitcoin. Now, someone is willing to borrow that Bitcoin off of you for, uh, at 5% for one year. You say, okay, I'll lend my Bitcoin out for 5% for one year. And one year's time, you have to, you'll receive back the Bitcoin that you loaned out. You'll take that Bitcoin and you'll sell it for US dollars because you have to pay back your US dollar loan. Now, the covered interest rate parity uh, formula describes the no arbitrage price the, uh, of the forward for Bitcoin US dollar. So if we look down below, we have forward equals the spot rate multiplied by the interest rate differential between US dollars and Bitcoin. And if we plug in the numbers here, 100 times uh, 1.1 over 1.05, we get about uh, 105 is the break even or the no arbitrage price of this forward contract. 
Now, in reality, does Bitcoin forwards or futures trade at this no arbitrage price? No. That's because each one of us has a different cost of funds. Some people are able to borrow at you know, negative rates, i.e. central banks, large governments, and large corporates. Uh, some people are able to borrow at uh, you know, prime, maybe if you're a large depositor um, at a bank. But most of the population borrows at an unsecured basis at a much higher rate. So what you'll do is you'll take your rate of borrowing, or let's say that you have some spare US dollars lying around, what is your opportunity cost of those US dollars? What other investments could you use those US dollars for that generates the same risk-adjusted return? And you use that rate. And then you compare the rate that the fee forward is trading at the market. If there's a difference, now you have an arbitrage trade. We'll cover that uh, cash and carry futures versus spot arbitrage in a future lesson. Now we're going to move on to our pricing uh, spreadsheets that I have. Uh, we have an XBT pricing spreadsheet for Quanto futures contracts and an XBU one for inverse. I'll focus on the XBT pricing sheet first. So, let me, these sheets uh, are a little fickle sometimes. Um, if you go to the market data tab and you click on refresh data, it will run a little script and pull in some of the most recent data from BitMEX. We have a spreadsheet which has real-time data which you can find uh, on the BitMEX website. So let's go back to the, uh, now up here I've listed uh, the four live uh, BitMEX futures contracts that we have right now. We have our daily XBT24H, our weekly XBT7D, uh, we have a quarterly, our March, and our June. Uh, the first thing that you want to look at with any futures contract is when does it expire. Uh, so today is expiry for our daily and weekly contract, so there is zero days to expiry, but we'll just put one in here for now just to make the math a little easier. And then you want to compute your, your T, or time value. Uh, now, with futures contracts, uh, we use actual over 365, which means the actual number of days between today and the expiry, and then 365 days a year. And you're going to get uh, a number here of T. And you're going to use this T to do simple interest rate calculations on your return in the futures contracts. Uh, so right now we've pulled in the market bid, ask, and last prices for these four contracts. And right now we'll just look at um, the Bitfinex uh, spot price. So I have $456 in here for that. And then we have this column called uh, Trader Fair. What does that mean? This is where you can put in your, your hurdle rates. Where do you borrow and lend money? So say that I, um, for one year, will pay... Uh, 1%, so 100 basis points for US dollars, and I receive nothing on my Bitcoin. The sheet will then calculate what that uh, fair value is um, in the respective time frame of the futures contract. Uh, and then we have this column um, called uh, the Bitfinex Fair. Now, Bitfinex operates one of the most liquid peer to peer margin trading platforms, and I use it as a good benchmark for the unsecured rate. Uh, to borrow and lend US dollars and Bitcoin for our ecosystem. And so now we see here the basis points per annum of uh, 1,400 and 200, respectively. And these are coming in uh, from the, uh, the lending books at Bitfinex. So now we want to look at what is the premium or discount outright, i.e., this is just the, the uh, futures price divided by the spot price minus one. And so here we have the different levels of the price. Now, if you want to compare different futures contracts, uh, looking at four uh, contracts on an outright basis means you're comparing apples to oranges because different contracts will have different times to maturity. It's to basically compare two futures contracts, you want to look at what is the per annum uh, cost um, and premium and discount terms for each futures contract. So what do we do? We divide by the T up here. And now we get these premium discounts in a per annum basis. I encourage all of you, if you're going to analyze 
futures contracts versus another futures contract to always look in annualized terms. And so what do we see here? We see that the uh, daily and weekly contract are trading at a much higher per annum rate than the uh, quarterly contracts. And <clears throat> we can ignore the US dollar gamma for now. We'll come back to that in later lessons. Um, but what we want to look at here is this is a simple calculation of that quadratic formula that I showed you earlier, or, or that parabolic return profile of our quanto contracts. This basically tells you what is your break-even price if you sold your futures contract versus buying a spot. And this is just an easy way to get a sort of a rough view on what is the implied annualized volatility of these quanto contracts. Now let's take a look at our XBU pricing sheet. Well, this one is fairly similar. We have the um, weekly XBU contract. Let's put in one for, and we see here we have an, a T, same as before, the uh, prices of the contract on the market, uh, and then our, our spot prices. And again, we want to calculate our premium and discount on an outright basis and then on a per annum basis. Now, as I said before, because we don't have this quadratic uh, effect in US dollars, we are able, we just want to look at what is the premium or discount of this future versus uh, spot or uh, the spot with the implied interest rate that we use as a trader. Uh, and we'll come back to using these rates to determine um, arbitrage strategies in, in the next lesson. So I'm going to end my sharing and see if we have any questions. Okay, I don't see, see any questions um, as of right now. Uh, I'll be available on um, our chat room uh, at bitmex.com. If you have any questions about our first webinar. Uh, so just to review, we went over what are the differences between spot margin and futures trading. Where does the leverage come from uh, on the different strategies? The differences between a quanto, our speculation XBT series, and inverse, our hedging XBU series. How do those contracts relate to each other in terms of exposures? And then we went over some simple pricing strategies on our pricing spreadsheet. Uh, now, I know that some of this is uh, new for a lot of you and probably need some time to review. Uh, I hope that you take a look through the spreadsheets that I've provided. Uh, and next week, we'll use the same spreadsheets to start on our first arbitrage strategies, which is selling futures and buying spot um, using an inverse contract, and selling futures and buying spot using a quanto contract. And the implications uh, in terms of margin and profit and loss, and then the simple mechanics of how to execute that trade on the BitMEX platform. Uh, so I'm going to end the broadcast here. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, hopefully everyone is uh, making good money on this nice volatility we have out of China. Um, please look forward to our next newsletter on Monday where I'll be doing a deep dive into China monetary policy and what we can expect uh, forward from Beijing and the PBOC and how that will affect Bitcoin. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good night and good day, good afternoon, wherever you are.